I am the greatest! Here I come to cars and coffee! Move! I have the best car, the best generation of the best car, and the best trim of the best generation of the best car! What did you buy? S2000! Ha <laughs> Asshole! I have the factory turbo Miata! You dick! I'm butting to the front of this porta party line! Yes, I know your ND is just as fast as this Mazda Speed NB, but do you have a turbo? I didn't think so. <laughs> By the way, I had a six-speed before anybody else! <laughs> Only 5,420 Mazda Speed MX-5s were ever made for the US market! <gasps> and I have one! Everybody line up your dicks for the prologue and then I will nap! The USDM Mazda Speed MX-5s made 178 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 167 pound-feet of torque at 4,500 RPM. Don't bother looking for the IHI turbo, it's sunken way down there. Don't bother trying to hear the turbo, it doesn't make much noise. Don't bother trying to get me hard, just pretend it's a churro that fell in the dog's water bowl. These are the correct 17-inch wheels one of the finest wheel well fitments from any factory. The engine is the BP4W, it's 1.8 liters, and it's designed to fit like a butt plug into the chaotic majesty of automotive ambivalence. You have a front-mounted air-to-air intercooler and speakers in the uh, roll bar here, uh, not roll bar, sort of a wind break. It's a nice alternative to the original NA speaker options that were directly in the seats. The car goes 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds with a top speed of 127 miles an hour. Now that's gear limited. If you were able to find a way to change the uh, rear end ratios, uh, you could get it to go faster than that. Really, you're just bouncing off the rev limiter at that point. The Mazda Speed Miata can pull almost 1G, you know, 0.98 in lateral grip thanks to those wider wheels and tires. It also has uh, Bilstein shocks. Tom also got a side mount license plate holder, which at this point is all banged up because New Jersey, uh, because originally they had the front license plate mounting point like directly in front of the intercooler because that makes sense. Ugh. Mazda Speed Miata. The official car of a guy who makes plans with you, and then when he picks you up, says, I just gotta make a few stops. I hope you like back roads. Hold on to your frappuccino. So why such a small number of Mazda Speed Miatas? Well, there was a fire at the production facility, so uh, the second year they just topped out at 1,428 units. Uh, the second year being 2005. I mean, in 2004, they cranked out like 4,000. And then, that's it. No more of these things. They never did a Turbo Miata again, so it's rare, but not impossibly so. It's not inconceivable that you might encounter this, although people will probably treat a Mazda Speed Miata like it is rare. So Tom got a Mazda Speed Miata because his first Miata that he ever got was in 1997 and it was fully track built. That car had an aftermarket turbocharger and a whole bunch of stuff done to it, and it was making 300 horsepower. What? And that was the car he learned to drive stick on. But then, crash, boom, bam, John Cougar Mellencamp, and the car was totaled. Tom went in search of his old Miata feeling. He googled Turbo Miata and landed on this car, and, quote, rage bought it. For Tom, his old track-built 97 Miata felt fast, whereas a normal, naturally aspirated NA or NB feels broken in his mind. But to Tom, this factory turbo one feels nice. This is everything you want from an MX-5. It's a regular Miata with some extra sauce. Whereas a traditional, naturally aspirated Miata NB starts gasping at around 5,200 RPM, 
The Mazda Speed gets its second wind at that point. The turbo surge isn't huge, but it's enough to give you confidence to pass at highway speeds. The only criticism I can find, okay, two criticisms, is one, the gear ratios are too wide to consistently keep the BP4W engine in boost. And number two, when you're on the turnpike, sixth gear is about 400 RPM too short, which means it, you're just driving in boost all the time at 70 miles an hour and gulping 93 octane. Not that a 1.8 liter engine is a guzzler for, but you know, it's, it's, not, it's not an EJ255. That thing chugs. But this BP4W still consumes more fuel than you expect it to. But if fuel economy matters in your Miata choice, just get any naturally aspirated MX-5 and take the extra grand you would have spent on a Mazda Speed and buy an aftermarket hardtop to smooth out your aerodynamics. Unless you're really tall, because then you're just going to be like every other Miata NB and the roof will never come up again. But this ties into the sudden shift in reputation surrounding Miatas. I don't think the general public resents them so much as they're confused about what they're supposed to like about them. A lot of people just can't get over it's small. To the lay person, the Miata is an Olive Garden breadstick with wheels. A car for the man whose wallet is fat with unused Texas Roadhouse gift cards. One look at a Miata will remind your girlfriend she needs to get new batteries for her vibrator. Mazda Speed Miata, the official car of getting dome in a Boscov's dressing room. Miata loyalists love to peacock about their Miatas, and I can't blame them. Even the most humble person can become self-centered when it comes to owning a car like this. It's the automotive equivalent of expecting your ex to never move on. Oh, you have a new man? After only four and a half years? Did I mean anything to you, Brenda? But people have spent so long hearing about how great Miatas are, it's natural to have doubts about whether that's the case. It is the case. But people will wonder if the inherent biases of the person driving it has led them down a path of denial about what they drive. Because everybody who owns a Miata says how great it is. So, do people driving Miatas actually like Miatas, or do they convince themselves that they do because everybody else says that Miatas are great? Is loving a Miata an organic conclusion to reach? Well, if you drive one, yes. Because odds are, you're going to get a really nice, sporty, well-handling car. You can argue that the Miata is for the person driving it in a way few flex cars are. Because you have to live with being looked down upon by the commoners in a Miata, both figuratively figurative, and literally. You have to make preparations for judgment. For any other flex car, your Mustangs, your Camaros, your Chargers, your Challengers, it's about the feeling of being seen driving it. But with Miata, you want the feeling of a tight corner, of cruising with the top down at star in a reasonably priced car speeds, while the sun washes over you like wild turkey and baby oil in the moments before crashing your ex's wedding. My heart aches for the people too big to drive one of these. Because Miatas refuse to compromise. If you're too big for a Miata, you will never not be too big for a Miata. Because Mazda will never accommodate you. Mazda is the equivalent of the type of person who prioritizes making everything difficult. Can you please just answer my question in fewer than three texts? Do I have to keep responding with but, followed by an ellipsis, followed by the question I already asked? Mazda Speed Miata. For the guy whose idea of flirting is, hey, I had a dream we bung last night. Pretty wild, huh? Anyway, how was your night? It's a car for the self-styled, cultured gentleman. He spent his youth listening to Silverchair and grew up to be a man who listens to nothing and wears Oakleys. He has Spotify Premium, but only for Rogan. He's never been in a fight, but he just knows that when the time comes, he'll be handing out super kicks like the Young Bucks, because every man believes he has the potential to handle himself in the moment of truth. Adrenaline will take over and awaken the dormant cowboy Cerrone inside him, and the rest will be 1 a.m. bowling alley history. But believe me, you can catch the fade anytime. As with any car someone is really proud to own, it can either be the catalyst or the back door out of saying anything worth listening to. 
because it's a lot of work to hold down a conversation at a dinner party, especially at a dinner party where everybody thinks they're Leo when it's really a room full of Jonah Hills. But this is a higher class of Miata, far removed from the recklessness of 90s NA models and their drivers whose every major life decision was the result of a magic eight ball. This is the Miata for the Miata purist and the newcomer alike, because it's a combination of the instantly recognizable Miata aesthetic with a dependable handling and now enhanced performance that everybody has spent the better part of the Miata's lifetime wishing for. Loudly. What if it had more power? Here it is. And we condition ourselves to think the loudest person is compensating for their wrongness, but the right car can justify the decibel levels. And this car is the perfect car to convert somebody from their Mustang Camaro Challenger bro life. There is nothing more cathartic to me or pleasing in the automotive world to get one of those silver goateed home-owning misogynists into a Miata that they say they hate, that they wouldn't be, oh, I gotta turn in my man card for driving one of these things, and you would let them drive it. And they spent two decades making gross jokes about Miatas, and they get to feel that steel roller coaster G-force as a Miata carves a corner faster than an S197 ever could, and they get out and they're smiling. And then I watch them spread the Miata word like the alien who discovered a guitar in 2112 by Rush. I shifted up, I shifted down, I gave my soul to El Miata, El Miata. I shifted up, I shifted down, I sold my soul to El Miata.